Well, my friends, it is that time, the most dreaded time of any Partscaster build, and that is installing the neck. What Partscaster, you may ask? Well, if you haven't been watching my videos and you don't know what I'm talking about, I am in the midst of a series or a playlist of a Partscaster build, and it is a Telecaster. Here's that guitar if you're interested. It is, of course, a 52 style Telecaster. I wanted it to be like a Blackguard, old school style. Uh, it's pretty simple. And if you haven't watched my videos, you're probably tired of hearing me say this and explaining it. But for those who haven't, I just want to preface and give you a little bit of a background about what this guitar is all about. So essentially, it is a road-worn Telecaster body. I bought the entire body fully stocked. It has the pickups and the pots and the wiring and all that stuff. I bought a neck separately. And the reason is because the Fender Roadworn series Telecasters come with a seven and a quarter inch radius, which is a vintage style, a little bit more rounded of a fretboard profile. And then uh, they also come with a urethane finish on them. So I wanted a nine and a half inch radius, which is a little bit more modern, a little bit flatter, easier to play up, uh, on the upper register of the neck, or at least a lot of people say so. And I also wanted the neck uh, to be finished in nitro silo. So I wanted the entire body to be finished in nitro, which the Roadworn series bodies are. I'm not sure why they do that. I think I have a clue. And the clue is, I haven't said this before, I don't think, but on the Roadworn series, they, at least on the Telecasters, they do a lot of the finger wear. Uh, so, you know, like as you play the neck, eventually an old style guitar, you would eventually start seeing on a maple neck you start seeing wear marks, little uh, little ovals. So, so Fender does that in the Mexican shop where they make the Roadworn Tellies and the Roadworn series. Uh, so they do that and they make those marks. And then if they were to finish the neck in nitro, then it would continue to wear over time and it would probably be you know, get worn out really quickly, really fast. So what they do is they finish it in a urethane, which really seals it in and it makes it to where you're not really gonna wear it out any more than it already is. So there you go, a little free tidbit for your information. Now I've got a lot of videos on this Telecaster about how I did everything from putting on the decal to uh, spraying the neck in nitro and all sorts of things, more things than you probably ever wanna know. But if you're building a guitar, if you're putting together a parts caster, then it's probably really interesting and hopefully it's helpful to you. Okay, so let's get to why we're here in this video. Now, as you can tell, hopefully you can, uh, as I'm holding this guitar, uh, that the neck is on straight. It is, uh, has good string spacing, if you can see there. There's nothing wrong with the back of the neck. It's tight, it's a good fit, good vibration. Good transfer uh, vibrations through the body. It plays well. I know you probably can't tell that by looking at it, but I can attest to you and, uh, and verify that it's in good shape. Now that wasn't always the case. As you'll be able to tell from the video clips that I'm about to show you, things didn't really go according to the way I planned it the first time. I ran into a few hitches and I'm not gonna tell you all about it right now. I'm gonna let you watch the video and see for yourself, but I can assure you, like I said, and like I've shown you that everything worked out in the end. This also turned out to be quite the long video, so I'm gonna split it up into two parts. This is part one, part two will of course follow, and I'll show you, uh, basically I'll show you in this video what went wrong, and then in the next video, I'll show you how I fixed it. So that's basically it. Let's jump into it. One last thing I will say is that for some reason I say but a lot of times in this video as I was editing it, I noticed that and the reason I say that is because I'm talking about the butt end of the guitar. So the bottom end as in you have a rear end, a butt, your bottom, this is like the butt end of the guitar. And I talk about the butt end of the neck pocket as well. So. That's why. As I always say, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell to be notified of new videos. All those things that people say about their channel to do, go do it, please. It will help me out. Um, and with that, I will see you in the next video. So this one, I'm trying to rough fit the neck to the body of the guitar. It's not a perfect fit at the moment. It also wasn't a perfect fit before I put the finish and the clear coat on the neck either. So I knew it was going to have a little bit of a fit up issue or not even an issue, just a little bit of working on the neck pocket to get it to fit. So at the moment, I'll show you here a little bit better on the camera. We've got a little bit of a gap at the butt end of the neck where it meets the body. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little gap there. And I think the culprit is this corner here, that very end there. There's a couple of options that I can do. What I think I'm gonna do is try to use more than one hand and I, you know, put the neck on here uh, right at the top of the body and sort of pencil in, draw around the neck and see exactly where the interference is. And like I said, I think it's this corner here. 
once I know the problem area, I need to take a little bit of material off and I have a file here that's not the greatest, but I can sort of uh, chisel away at that section. The other option and a, and a more common method is and this is what I did on my Stratocaster neck pocket is to use a sanding block and get in here and make sure that you know you're you're not sanding off the, the bottom of the pocket, but you're sanding off just slightly enough uh, material on the sides of the neck pocket to you know what you want to do is take away a little bit of material, check, sand some more, check. You know, you definitely don't want to take too much off. So that's kind of the methodology I'm gonna go with at the moment. I don't know that I'll show you it all on the camera because that might be boring but i will kind of uh, describe the method that i go through that works and i'll kind of give you a, a visual of what i did to get there okay so i've placed the neck sort of like i said on the top of the body the best i could with two hands and this pencil mark right here this little faint outline is approximately the shape of the neck on this corner so that's kind of ballpark not not that I have to remove that much material, but I have to kind of get that similar shape. And there comes a point where right, right here, where it's, it doesn't really follow the same curvature. So I think if I kind of work that area a little bit with sandpaper, I'll see how it goes and then see if I need to employ the file or not. But I'll kind of work it with some sandpaper maybe uh, in the corner and see how that goes. Probably with this block, since it's pretty flat, and then I can get in here like that without necessarily getting any material off this wall. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good fit with the neck now. There's not the gap down at the bottom that there was. And if I pick the guitar up. So what I was having problems with was the neck seating in the back. So the neck would tilt sort of and be able to contact this top part of the body. But the bottom part I could tell was not contacting down in the pocket towards the, uh, the butt end of the body. Now if I press on sort of the entire bottom end of the neck, it sits flat against the neck pocket. And uh, this is a pretty good test. If you can pick the guitar up like this without the neck bolted on, it's, you can see the guitar is off the ground. And that's a pretty good tight fit. It's not too tight. You can tell that it even moves a little bit if I um, if I were to tilt it back. And you know, you probably already know this, you may not, but you never want to put the neck in from this way, like from the top of the guitar down. You want to stick it in from the top of the body. Well, not in this direction, but down. And so you want it to go kind of like that. And then fit in there. And you can see that there's a little bit of play. If I kind of press down tightly, then it stays. The headstock doesn't tilt back, but if I was to push down on it a little bit, it will go back. And I'm not an expert at this, but I do know that you want a pretty good tight fit and you want a solid contact all the way around the neck. And if you can, just to make sure that your, uh, your string vibration and all that resonance is going through the body and, and sustaining and everything. Of course, you wanna maximize tone. So that's the big deal, I guess, with getting that really good connection. So I think we're good for now. Um, and so I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you the methods that I used. I just did what I, what I mentioned earlier. I really kind of worked the bottom corner down here uh, quite a bit with this file, kind of rubbing, concentrating down there in the corner, low, uh, sort of scraping this way and that, and even up and down a little bit. You know, you can tell when you're getting material off and you don't want to go too much, like I said, so it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of like trying to get material off, fitting the neck back and forth. And what you don't want to do is, is necessarily take like a sweeping amount off in any direction because what you may be doing is taking off stuff that you don't want gone. So for example, if the neck is not fitting down in this corner, like it was for me, you don't want to start taking material off up here, like with your sanding block. You don't want to just keep doing that back and forth because you still need this up here. You know, you might that might not need to go away, but only this does. So one of the other things, I've seen somebody use carbon copy paper, uh, that kind of old stuff that you used to use on, um, I guess some checkbooks used to use it. Maybe they still do, but uh, you can buy that. I didn't want to do it just for this, but you can buy it and place it sort of in the pocket and then push the neck down. It'll make a little print on the places where you need to sand off. 
But I found that if you start sanding a little bit, get some sanding dust and you put the neck down, if you bring it back up, you'll, I don't have any really on there now, but you'll get some sanding dust in the areas that the neck is contacting the most or the contacting first. So that kind of helps. But yeah, I did use the block. I also, I used the block really to get down into, I know this sandpaper's loose, but I made it kind of taut when I did it. But in these corners, I'll kind of go back and forth a little bit in each of these, because like I said, I think where I was getting the interference points was down at the contact because the body the neck wasn't making contact with these areas very well but now that's all good i did also have to sand back the pickguard a little bit and so what i did with that is i took the sanding block and just went this way on either side also down here this little corner was kind of i'm exaggerating but pointing in like that a little bit so i just took some off of there I still probably need to do a little bit more, but the pick guard fit doesn't necessarily matter. You just want clearance. You don't want a huge gap. You just want to make sure that it's not binding for sure. And then the other thing is that it's not a gaping hole. So pretty self-explanatory. All right, I'm getting ready to bolt on the neck or at least drill holes for the neck. And so right now I've got one of these screws into the body with the neck plate here, as you can see. So with this Telecaster, the body itself is actually threaded for the screw. So in other words, I can't just take the screw in and out. I actually have to screw it into the body. With my strap body, with the strap project, uh, the hole is big enough to where the screw would just move in and out straight through. So that's a little bit different with this, but I've got it set to where the screws all the way through the body. And what that gives me is my uh, depth of, here's my drill, of course, it matches the body. Anyway, so it gives me an idea of the depth I need to drill into the neck, if you can see that. And like my strap project, I've got tape on the drill bit to where it's just barely fits into the hole. And what that gives me is a guide to where I'm not getting skewed or anything with my hole into the neck. So that's the plan. I'm gonna clamp the neck down onto the body We've got some strings in the body right now, and I'm gonna set those up the high and the low E strings. And what that'll do is give me a guide as far as my um, my neck alignment so that there's an even space on either side of the fretboard between the, the low and the, the high E strings. So hopefully you can see this and it translates well to the camera. As it stands right now, the high E string is a little closer to the edge of the fretboard than the low E string, which seems to be the case in my little amount of experience because you know you don't have a lot of material right here pushing back on the neck and you have a ton of it on this low E string side. So what you can do is just on the headstock end, if you pull it ever so slightly, you can get it to where you need it to be. And then what I'll do is clamp it in place as best I can and then drill it from there, uh, hoping that it does not move any. So that's what I did with my Strat. It seemed to work pretty well. So I'm going to uh, attempt that with this one. Okay, I think I've got it where I want it now. So I'm going to drill. Hopefully my uh, clamp doesn't get in the way of my drill. Okay, time out, Zach Moore style. You may be asking why in the world did I use a C-clamp on the neck to hold it in place? Well, that's a good question. So with my strat project, I put together a strat, sort of like a custom shop, heavy relic strat. If you're interested in those videos, click up here on the little I and it'll take you to that playlist. But when I put together that guitar, I used something like this. Now this is a um, ratchet clamp. It's from Harbor Freight, so it's just not the greatest. Um, there are some things from Harbor Freight that are perfectly fine. I just found that these, uh, maybe I don't know how to use them properly, but I just found that they, they hold good tension, but for some reason they can slip a little bit or they just don't hold together as tightly as I would want. So when I was doing my strap project, I didn't feel like they were holding it together Together, the neck uh, to the pocket as well as I really wanted to and so with this Telecaster project instead of going to like Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace or somewhere like that and getting some really good decent uh, ratchet clamps what did I do I went back to Harbor Freight my cheap self and I thought well, I'll just get a cheap C-clamp because the uh, the closing force on this is super great. I mean, you can just screw down and get it as tight as you want. Only problem with that is this surface here and this are really slick. And you'll see in my video that basically, well, for one thing, the clamp was in the way of the drill. I tried to go with the drill in uh, like this first and everything was in the way and then I switched it over, but turned out that this was still in the way. So yeah, that's why I thought to use a C-clamp. Um, in retrospect, as you can see, it wasn't a great idea. 
and I wouldn't do it again. What I would do is get a better set of these, maybe a smaller one even, but one that just has really good closing force and is sturdy and is reliable. Okay, back to this video. I hope I don't make you cringe too bad. Remember, everything turns out fine in the end. Which I think it might. Okay, my clamp was in the way of my drill bit last time, so I've reversed the clamp, and now I'm going to drill. Okay, like I mentioned with my strap project, the body of the strap actually allowed the screws to go all the way through the body. And so by doing that, I was able to get the right size hole in the neck with the first try. But with the tele body, I had, to, I had to use a smaller bit in order to get into the holes of the body. So now what I gotta do is go enlarge these holes and I'm going to use a 964 drill bit. For my strat, I use an eighth, but I'm just looking at these screws compared to my drill bit size. And I know with the, the eighth inch uh, drill bit that I used for my strat, the screws went in really, really tight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a 964 and I've read where uh, a lot of people use that as their size, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I got my tape on there so that I know the depth I need to drill. And the holes are already in there, so the drill is gonna follow the path of least resistance. So it should go in pretty straight. Yes, I know I have sawdust all over my carpet now, but I'll vacuum it up. So I've got some wax on my screw. Cause inside out, it's wiggin' 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 wax! I just wanna make sure they go in without any big interference or anything before I put the neck on the body. And it looks like they're still going in tight. Not too tight, but at least they're not too loose or anything like that. So, looks like we're good. Well, last night I drilled the neck for my Telecaster, and if you can see, it's just turned out pretty well that it went horribly wrong. The string spacing on either side of the fretboard is way off. Uh, I thought I did a really good job of getting it set with the clamp, but I think it moved on me or something, and you know, obviously it just is not good. So unfortunately, about the only thing I can do is redrill the holes which is sort of embarrassing that, you know, redrilling holes on, you know, a swab of body or something like that is a little more prestigious, <laughs> but the fact that I basically ruined it on the first try is, is pretty embarrassing and pretty mad at myself. I'm upset, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I may have better video footage of this, and if I do, I'll show it to you, but there's actually a little bit of a gap to where I feel like the the neck moved up. Okay, so see up there, that little ridge is the bottom of the neck pocket, or anyway, towards the, the butt end of the guitar. So you can see, now if I take the screws out, and I can actually move the neck all the way down, so there's no obstruction. It's almost like the neck, when I was adjusting it, uh, it moved on me. And if uh, you watch that video of me putting the neck on, you'll know that the string spacing was kind of like this to begin with. So anyway, um, yeah, I think the neck just moved on me or something. So what I'm gonna do now is take the neck back off and just uh, assess the situation and see what can be done. I don't have it figured out, but I'll take 